And now welcome our market master, Tarun Mukherjee, a senior of institutional equity with Ambit Capital joined in. Uh, he's been listening into the discussion that we've had with uh, Ambit. So, Tarun, first, before we ask you about the market, mm -hmm. your comment on how to approach some of these uh, good quality auto answering names and the other sector as a whole, we should attract very closely. Uh, I don't have any comments on Ambit as such. Uh, we, don't, uh, we don't cover that stock. Uh, but I think, I think the way to look at it in our country is I think it's very much a, a, a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde sector. Mm -hmm. Anything to do with passenger cars and AGVs, I think is reasonably holding up reasonably well. And anything which is rural and semi urban so two wheels, tractors, EVs, LCDs, I think there's some serious pressure there. Actually, you know, yesterday Nancy said that the rural uh, uh, part of their uh, uh, sales has gone up from 32 to 35 percent. I don't know whether it's a quarterly breakup, but for the, that was the four-year breakup. So I think, I think we could put it in context. For the last four to five years, almost every uh, you know, rupee of growth of the auto industry has seen in our country has come from rural. So in the context of the last four or five years, where rural has been the so hard and so growth driver, I think that is fading away because rural India's uh, economic availability, so to speak, is being kept away as the subsidy regime uh, becomes very hostile from the rural India perspective. At the same time, there are you know, modest and perhaps very early signs of a recovery in urban, and that is helping uh, a company like Maruti be giving some footing on the urban side. But if you are a two-wheeler company, uh, uh, which is growing heavily in rural India, growing in rural India over the last three or four years, I think the current uh, economic situation is very difficult. The provision is really under serious pressure. Whether it is in auto, whether it is in cement, whether it is in paint, it doesn't matter which sector you look at. It, it, it has become very, it really has become a situation where the property percent of economic economic activity is coming from rural and semi urban India is under serious pressure. Okay. Let me just add the word out of compassion. So the subsidy regime, we will have to pay that globally food prices, the agri prices are also crashed. So that's also perhaps how it is. Anyway, I will ask you actually what I say to your bank. How did you read the numbers yesterday? After a down tick yesterday, the stock has bounced back today, almost 4% higher. So do you think it's just a little bit bad news? Uh, okay, because of this new study, said the regime, I can't talk about this stuff without, uh, um, yeah, without disclosure and compa compliance sign off. The only general point I make in banking, one of the points we made going into the result season, a good two months ahead of the result season, was we felt that for the private sector banks, we would see a rise in corporate uh, corporate bank debt. Mm -hmm. I think that's coming through uh, reasonably clearly. Uh, we've had three large banks, at least two of them highly regarded for their quality of asset quality management, and we've seen uh, corporate bad debts rise quite materially, uh, in some cases for a long year actually. I think this will stay the tenor of the result season where well run, well known banks, private sector banks, disappoint on asset quality. Uh, and my fear is to stay true for a good six, seven months mm -hmm. because of the way the economy is softening. I think it's unquestionable that underlying economic activity is softening and that is having a bearing on, on bank credit quality. In fact, you know, I was going to come to that. I was going through your latest strategy note, and you mentioned that FY16 will be a world in which both consumption and investment growth is likely to disappoint. Um, why, you know, if you compare it to the housing expectations, mm -hmm. so how do you really um, assess your own portfolio mm -hmm. based on the slowdown? Where do you sell and where do you replace that with? Yeah. So, just to put some numbers around it. The consensus GDP growth expectations are around 8, 8.1% as per the new uh, GDP series. That con contrasts with 7.4% in the previous fiscal. That's our estimate for FY15. Um, we simply can't see growth going from 7.4% to 8.1%. It sort of appears to be as some sort of fantasy mm -hmm. to expect growth to go from 7.4% to 8.1%. My reckoning is growth this year, FY16, will be pretty much as the as same as the growth last year. Yeah. But the challenge is a lot of companies have have assumed that this will be a better year yes. than last year, and a lot of investors have assumed this will be a better year than last year. And that's where I think the challenge will come in. If you as a, uh, as a manufacturer had loaded up an inventory or started building capacity in anticipation of better growth in 16, I think that's where the challenge is going to come through. And that will be a source of incremental credit quality stress uh, for the SME sector, for the manufacturing sector.
So we're taking back how the investment was planned. I think we're going back to our you know, COVID and team portfolio. In the early February iteration, we cut cyclicals uh, uh, quite heavily. Uh, for the first time in two years, our weighted team portfolio was looking equal weight on cyclicals. So the the NFT has around 70% weighted in cyclicals, so there's our weighted team portfolio. But more importantly, the weighted team portfolio focuses on companies with strong balance sheets, uh, high strong cash flows, uh, good management, and renewable accounts. And I'm, I'm glad we made that switch in early February because uh, our weighted team has outperformed the market by 130 bits. The market itself is down by, I think, more, more like 4 5 percent since our early February iteration. Uh, early February iteration. The going clean has outperformed the market by around 150 bits, so we're still down in absolute terms. But at least if you focus on high quality names uh, uh, over the next six, seven months, which I think will be genuinely difficult once we move from an economic activity perspective. If you focus on high quality names, your portfolio will be protected from what appears to be a very uncertain time. And I'll stress one more thing. So you said two years ago, three years ago, all of us knew we were in a downturn. That means, mm -hmm. of course, you know, we could, could, you know, we could look, look at the downturn and say, yeah, now we structure our portfolios. The challenge now is it's not clear. Are we in a recovery or are we in a downturn, right? And, and, and mm -hmm. as of the meeting. Further downturn is possible. So, so you know, the economic growth numbers we were in the series have picked up for 15 years of the 14, right? That's the meaning that pick up in the few years of 14. In fact, I've been in the series 14 and better than 13. So I've been in the new series where three years into an economic recovery. So using that new series, it's not evident to me that the 16 GDP growth numbers are going to be radically better than 15. And hence, from that perspective, you are looking at a, at a, at a macro outlook which is itself is uncertain and unpredictable. I think that makes portfolio structuring that much more difficult. And hence, our point of view is, uh, 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 focus on value on companies, strong balance sheets, don't get too greedy in this climate, don't try to shoot the lights out by buying lights. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, do you that argument when, you know, some of our strongest sales are these well run companies like Asian Pays, Gold Rich Consumers, etc. Uh, why would you sell these companies? Is it because the macro is showing them so much? No, so, so the one way to look at it is these are well run companies, but they've got high dependence on rural and semi urban India. So, whatever we are seeing high dependence on rural and semi urban India, China checks are fairly emphatic that the demand outlook is really that dire. So it's a combination of two factors. One of the construction industry seems to have slowed down radically in the last four or five months. Construction activity uh, as a result of demand, clean demand, electrical demand has sorted off in the last four or five months. And a separate sort of consumption. Uh, Rural consumption, semi urban consumption has, yeah. has slowed down as, as we had not just uh, under the new government, but even under the previous government. At 514, there was no growth in subsidies. At 515, there was very little growth in subsidies. And at 516 budget, you actually cut in subsidies by 9%. If for three consecutive years, there is no growth in the subsidy regime, you'll obviously have, uh, uh, you'll obviously see a breakdown in, in rural and semi urban consumption. So it's a double service in the construction sector slow down and consumption, distinct from construction slowdown, and that in turn hits these companies that you just mentioned. This is not different with the news we get presented. I mean, I think construction slowed down, mm. and we are told that LHI is uh, announcing a lot of tenders and road construction, even Gadkari says it's picked up. Yeah. So this is where the challenge is. Like, this is why I'm saying it's so hard to read the climate. You're absolutely right. The government is saying what the government is saying. But the cement demand numbers are pathetic. Like you saw, when the life for like this, is, it's 9% down. If the largest cement manufacturer in the country is 9% down in volume terms, that tells its own story. And now Fatek is a gigantic cement company. So what I think is happening is the government is making policy at a brisk pace. I don't think you can force them for the, uh, the, the efficacy in policy making. Where I think the system is very jammed is the execution of policy. Where I think we we'll see this for how honestly... The container is the best slowed. You say more roads were constructed and fewer are getting constructed in the second half of the year. I'm saying what was happening was uh, uh, residential real estate construction. Oh, what was happening at a faster pace, I don't know, a year ago, than is happening now. Even though as far as the residential real estate construction, I dare say, was happening at a faster pace six months ago than is happening now. Okay. So I, as the real estate construction, the, the, what we call the individual house buyer story, which actually I have to confess I have sat on in this exact seat six months ago and, and you know, lavish praise on the individual house buyer story in rural and seven over India. That seems to have broken down quite yeah. comprehensively. Okay, I'm just going to take a minute uh, to flash something that's come up on Walkhard and the exchanges. Walkhard has informed the BFP that during the last year of the inspection of its facility at Chikaltana, some observations were reported pertaining to batches of some products that were manufactured prior to the US FDA import alert. 
there is a company continues to supply some of the products in the U.S. market. Several batches of other products may still be in the U.S. market. As a measure of preparedness, the company has now decided to recall as a part of a remedy and measure all the remaining batches that are present in the U.S. market that were manufactured prior to the U.S. FDA import alert. So there will be a recall of products from your work hard stunt of uh, a batch of some products that were manufactured for the U.S. market. So now the work has been uh, under intense pressure to stop that is. But um, kind of just uh, coming back to the point you are making about growth, uh, how long do you think it could take mm -hmm. for um, real signs of what you could fit? Because you know, that's the million dollar question. Everyone thought six months back that things were looking like they're picking up, but we haven't seen any pickups yeah. yet. So my reckoning is that um, I, I don't think global factors are going to give us that much joy. So it largely hinges on public sector capex. I can't see private sector capex coming to the party in F516. Uh, public sector capex, thanks to the budget, we know has to come from two places. Those, we the 120% increase in budgeted outlay, and real losses of 50%. We really do need these two sectors to fire, and that is largely contingent on execution. So there are two industries uh, which we are looking towards for an action and execution. It's roads and railways. Uh, in the absence of this and in the absence of, say, an ONGC or NTPC or Codemy are stepping up and hitting the capex button hard, it's difficult to see where the recovery comes. So all eyes uh, are on the public sector, both in terms of development and the PSUs, for them to hit the index of the return capex. Without that, I can't see growth being uh, better this year than it was last year. Okay. Well, just for some numbers, uh, when you say GDP is flat, how have you trimmed your earnings for cost? Mm -hmm. And where have you trimmed the which companies? Yeah. So just to put it in perspective, um, till two, three months ago, our, uh, our sense of CPS growth for F516 was 19%. Mm -hmm. We slashed it down to 15%. Right? Uh, where have we trimmed it? It's, trimmed, it's been trimmed heavily in the cyclical sector. So industrials, auto, uh, banking. That's where the biggest pullbacks have come. Industrials, because you don't see all the flow picking up. Auto because of the rural semi urban challenge and banking because the really credit quality challenges will be much more pertinent for the private sector banks, and I think consensus uh, is, is, uh, is believing it to be. So it will be far more in IT that you remain as we are. Right. So, so the, the instinct today to, to play in there would be you know, far more IT, even, uh, you know, even essentially to order the learning pressure, investors still seem to have faith there. But I think I will allege. Uh, investors look at the market in a slightly different way. Take, take a company like Estes Size India, PI mm -hmm. Industries. Mm -hmm. It's not easily classifiable. It's neither a farmer uh, play nor really is it a consumption play. It's pesticides, it's agrochemicals. Uh, there's no reason to believe that both from a domestic perspective, uh, agrochemicals do not improve, especially as the Prime Minister cuts back on NSP hikes for meat and rice. And there's good reason to believe that from an export perspective, 60% uh, of PI industries revenues come from exports, this company should do well. Mm -hmm. Similarly, I'll, I'll, you know, we have the name Power Grid, right? On the face of it, you say this is an industrial name, but I think Power Grid is a company with good, good earnings visibility. 15.5% mm -hmm. regulator RLE, mm -hmm. strong asset addition, uh, strong tendering. Uh, Power Grid PI industries are you know, reasonably sensible ways to clear difficulty, you know, although they don't easily fit into the car classification of PI, Pharma, IT, uh, FMCT. Mm -hmm. We've been bullish on coal India as well, but given that we haven't seen too much pickup and execution uh, on the ground, do you think that coal India could take a while before it starts to perform? I think coal India remains for us a, a high conviction buy, and the reason I'm saying this is if you look at the coal India uh, uh, burning rate, um, since, since the India government took charge, burning rates are consistently been 8 to 10 percent. Mm -hmm. Compare that with the, the 10 year cover of 3 to 3 percent, the 20 year cover of 5 percent, it's clear that coal India burning rate has gone to a new level. Yes. Second basis statements made by the, the relevant secretary on your channel, mm -hmm. it's very clear that they're not going to hit coal in their operating margins. If anything, as they cut the supply of linkage goal mm -hmm. to the cement sector and the metal sector, coal in their margins could see some upside surprise. Mm -hmm. um, so, so both on the volume front and the operating margin front, we have high visibility on, on companies that are pretty critical to the government's fortunes. Fair enough. Sir. We have been told that we've gone on for too long. Thank you very much, sir. Sir, because it was the most uh, uh, inviting conversation, even if a little sobering, actually. No growth this year, flat GDP, perhaps.